Hey guys, the Explorer 4 here, Horrorboy465. Welcome back to some more reviews. And today talking about the ABCs of Death 2. Now the ABC of Death 2 came out in 2014. Um, of course, this is the sequel to the first film, which I did a review for a year ago, but I decided to do the review on it now, since I've been doing a bunch of sequels I haven't talked about yet. Um, and mainly the, the reason why I didn't do a review on this sequel um, is because I kind of ran out of time. I didn't really have the time to do this review back when I did the review in the first movie. Um, because these anthology reviews, they're a little bit longer than my usual reviews because I'm going to be covering all the segments in the film. And especially in the ABC of Death films, I mean, I'm covering from A to Z in the segments um, in these films. But... Um, yeah, that's why I really didn't do a review on it in the past, because I really didn't have the time to review this movie in the past. Um, but decided to review it today. Um, I'm not really sure I'm going to do a review in Rosemary's Baby 2. I'll do that review eventually, whenever I watch it, because I don't know. I really did not get into the film when I first started watching it. It really felt like it was very cheap, and the acting was pretty bad. But I'll review it eventually, but for right now, I'm just going to kind of push that back to the side, Rosemary's Baby 2, because it's a pretty bad film so far. Um, but I will review it eventually, but I want to talk about this film today because I really enjoyed this movie. This is a movie I think is a much better film than the first movie. The first movie is okay. I don't hate the first movie. Um, there are segments in the first movie that I really enjoy, but I feel like this movie had a lot of good segments in it. I felt it had you know, which the first movie did as well. It had some really great special effects, a lot of practical effects, a lot of creative ideas, a lot of really disturbing ideas as well. Some creative, some disturbing, some sick, some weird, some like this. this the first movie also did that, but that's also one of the good things I like about these movies that you sort of get a mix of everything. You know, you get your disturbing segments, you get the segments that are a little bit creative. Um, like in the first, I believe the first movie where it's through the point of view of a vampire being killed. I believe it's in the first movie. Um, but some really creative ideas, some really cool stuff in these movies. Although in the first movie, I felt like there was a little bit more ridiculous segments. Um, segments that were also very lazy, like um, the one segment where the guy goes out into the ocean on a surfboard and drops a brick and then pretty much commits suicide in the ocean, drops a brick in the ocean and commits suicide. Um, the one about the girl, um, I think that's like, like miscarriage or something like that, where it's pretty much the, the girl ends up having a miscarriage and, um, it's in like the toilet and the toilet's full of blood and stuff like that. And that's all the segment is. Um, so you had some segments in the original that weren't really that good, but here, although there are a few, um, that weren't that good, which I'll get into in, when I talk about the segments, um, this one had a lot of good segments in it. Um, this one had a lot of creative segments. This one had a lot of really disturbing segments as well. Um, and this movie felt like it had a bigger budget. The segments felt like they were, they had a bigger budget behind them than the first movie. Um, and I just really enjoyed the sequel. This is a sequel I thought the segments weren't, they weren't really too much, but they had gore. But they really weren't ridiculous with it. They weren't really ridiculous with the ideas. Um, they kept it to where it was shocking. And there was a lot of gore. Which, gore in a horror film, I don't mind I me. Mean, I'm a gore hound. I mean, gore in a horror film is awesome. But in the first movie, you had like some really, really insane gore stuff. But in this movie, you do as well. Especially the last segment, which we'll talk about. But... As far as, you know, just ridiculous segments, like in the first movie, just had some really stupid stuff in it. Um, like the one segment where it's just a guy trying to kill the spider and stuff, it was really bad. But in this movie, um, it's a lot better than the first movie. It's It feels like it has a bigger budget. The segments were a lot more creative. The segments were not really lazy. They, there was a few from that that were kind of ridiculous, but... I can't really remember any lazy ones. I might come across a lazy one here and there, but in the first movie, you just had a lot of lazy ones, a lot of ridiculous ones, a lot of stupid ones. But in this movie, you had a lot of good ones. Um, and I love the idea of these films, an anthology film where it's from A to Z in the different ways that you can die. Um, very creative idea, getting from A to Z, getting all these directors to make these movies all over different, you know, basically all over the world. 
Um, and I really love that that idea. Um, but I thought this the sequel was handled a lot better. I feel like it had a lot better ideas behind the segments. And just all together, I thought it was a better movie. But um, yeah, so I'm going to get into the segments now, starting off with A, which is A for Amateur, directed by E.L. Katz. Now, this is about a it's a really cool segment where this assassin is getting ready to kill a drug dealer. And um, he is going over the plan in his head, and the plan sort of plays out how it's supposed to go. And he gets into an air duct, and he gets stuck in the air duct. And pretty much... Um, and by the way, if you haven't seen ABC at Death 2, I will be spoiling the film. So if you have not seen it yet, uh, I will be spoiling this film. So if you haven't seen it yet, uh, you might want to watch it, then come back. But um, yeah, I will be spoiling this film. Oh, it is a, it is a couple years old. I mean, it was made in 2014. But if you haven't seen it yet, I will be spoiling this film. But the guy gets stuck in the air duct and pretty much dies in there. And then the drug dealer opens up the freaking air duct, the, the vent... And the body falls out, the gun falls out, and it shoots the drug dealer, ends up killing him. Pretty funny segment, pretty fun idea, it was a pretty crazy, ironic uh, segment. And it was like, really cool how they did the whole, the assassin played it all out in his head, then he went to go do it, and it was just a disaster. Um, it was It was really cool, it was a really neat, creative idea, and it was a pretty good segment. Next segment is B for Badger by Julian Barrett. Now, this one was pretty crazy as well, where it starts off this news reporter, and he's uh, trying to do this story, um, I believe, about, like, nuclear stuff. And, of course, he sort of snaps at his camera guy, and he's, you know, acting like he's better than everybody else. And then a freaking badger literally eats him, and the body falls onto the frame, and the badger eats the rest of the crew. That's pretty much segment. I know it's very simple, but the, this, the idea in general was pretty pretty crazy. But um, the segment was well done. I mean, it was it was shot through the uh, cameraman's camera, and I thought it was a pretty crazy segment. C is for Capital Punishment, directed by Julian Gilby. Um, now, this one was a pretty crazy one where uh, a man is charged with um, the murder of a teenage girl and the town pretty much takes matters into their own hands. And they they rush this guy into the woods. They get him to go on this tree stump. Really crazy scene where the guy takes an axe and he hits the guy in the neck. But the guy is not dead, so he keeps hitting him in the neck, keeps him in the neck. It's a pretty bloody, gory scene until the guy ends up dying. Um, and... They end up finding out that the guy didn't murder the daughter. That the guy was in, that ended up being innocent, so it was a little bit of a twist to that segment. And it was very well shot, um, very crazy segment. And so far, these three segments, they're just really creative. Um, I know that the B for Badger one doesn't really have much to it, but um, they weren't like stupid, ridiculous, silly stuff. They were kind of basic, keeping it basic, you know, not too silly, not too... Um, you know, stupid, but Super Capital Punishment, it was done well, um, and pretty crazy segment, uh, D is for DeLowes, written by Robert Morgan, now, a, it's pretty much a stop animation, uh, claymation, really, really creepy, and I, I believe Robert Morgan is a very well-known animator, and he's done a lot of animations you know, claymation and stuff like that. And this is a pretty crazy segment as well. This one was very, just, even though it's not done with like, you know, I mean, it's done with claymation, but it's still kind of a really disturbing segment where these people would tie this guy down and they shove this thing into him and they kill this bug. And the bug, it's really, really crazy where the bug sort of comes back to life and it grows and it forms into a huge giant bug, and it comes over and it bites the guy. Then the guy grows off of his dead body. It's a very crazy, very, very crazy uh, scene. And the dead body, of course, or not, the, not the dead body, but the, the new body sort of rises up, and this bug sort of helps him get revenge on these people that's done this to him. And it's pretty, once again, very kind of a basic, I, you know, basic segment with some really crazy, disturbing imagery. You know, and the use of claymation was done very well. 
Um, and it was just a very eerie kind of segment as well. Kind of had this layer of disturbing, eerie, creepy, because especially during the scene where the bug just sort of, you know, the dead bug sort of has like, I think like maggots that come out of it, and then the giant bug comes out of it. Pretty well done animation, um, pretty disturbing segment, um, and it was well done. Uh, e is for Equilibrium. Now, this one's pretty much about these two dudes. This one was one of those lazy, stupid ones. These two dudes, they're on this island, and, you know, they're two on the island. You know, they grew up their hair and beard and stuff like that. They are trapped on this island, abandoned on this island. And there's a girl on the island, and the two guys end up fighting over the girl, and then one guy ends up killing the other dude. And pretty much that is the end of the story. That That's pretty much all it is. Um, they uh, pretty much try to kill each other because there's, there's this girl there. And it was directed by Alejandro Burgos. And, uh, I mean, the segment, it really was a lazy. It was one of those segments where it was kind of lackluster, not much to it. Um, that was pretty much it. Just these two people on the island, they one kills the other. I think they actually end up, I don't know, I think it just like one kills the other. Um, and over this girl, and that's pretty much the segment. Um, F is for Falling, directed by Ashran Cashels and Navit Papashato. Um, this one was a really, really well done segment where this soldier is trapped uh, in a tree. From a, she's a, um, she's a uh, soldier. And she gets trapped in this tree because her parachute gets caught in this tree. And uh, I believe it's like in the Middle East. So um, this other soldier comes over and he's sort of telling her, um, you know, talking to her a little bit. And she ends up saying for him to cut her down. And when he cuts her down, she falls and breaks her leg in a really well done effect. And then the boy ends up falling and dying. And pretty much the rest of the soldiers come up. They're getting ready to kill her because they think that she killed this boy. And pretty much that's the segment. Um, I know that I'm not really giving a lot of you know detail in these segments, but I'm just pretty much telling you guys the justice segment. Um, but it was a really well done segment. Um, very intense, very suspenseful. Um, atmosphere was nailed. Good camera work. Good shots. Um, thought it was well directed. And uh, Definitely one of my favorite ones after falling. Uh, G is for grand. <laughs> G is for granddad, which was written by Jim Hosking. This was just a freaking disturbing segment where this young this this guy is with his granddad and he's talking all rude to his granddad. <laughs> well, actually, I don't. I think it's like um and uh. He's like being rude to his grandfather. He ends up going to sleep, and his grandfather is like in the bed. And <laughs> the guy jumps out of the bed. The grandfather gets out of the bed. It's freaking gross, man. Where the grandfather gets out, he's like naked, and he's like, "How dare you call me that?" and stuff like. And then the guy in the granddad is like naked, and the freaking end of the segment is them zooming in on the granddad's private area. It's a freaking disturbing segment. That was one that was freaking disturbing. Um, it, it, it did what it set out to do. It was disturbing. It was shocking. Not much to, to it, but it was freaking, you know, disgusting and gross. And it, it was definitely disturbing. So, yeah, G for Granddad. It did what it set out to do. It was disturbing. It did what it, what it was supposed to do. It was disturb you. And it was disturbing in the sixth segment. Uh, H is for Head Games. Uh, this was directed by. Bill Plim Plimpton, and this was a really well done sort of animation scene where uh, Bill Plimpton uh, is an animator as well, and it's it's a drawing of these of this man and this woman they're kissing, and then the animation goes all twisted. You know, you're seeing like one's face is turned to a creature, and then it deforms, and then there's all kinds of crazy stuff going on. It was really well done, and the animator was Bill Plimpton. Now, uh, um, 
he's known for uh, shorts like Your Face, Guard Dog, um, a couple other stuff. But it was really well done. Um, it's done a lot of animations. It was really well done. It was very well drawn. And it was a definitely a very creative segment where they're kissing and their freaking heads deform and all kinds of crazy stuff starts, going, starts happening. It's a pretty crazy segment. Um, so that's H for head games. And next one is J for Jesus. Now this one was a really crazy segment where um, pretty much these, I believe like two priests... They end up capturing, um, these two priests end up capturing this gay man. And they ended up killing his partner, and they're now torturing this gay man. And the gay man is seeing him, seeing the two priests as, like, demons and stuff like that. And the two priests are really crazy scene where they're trying to exercise the guy like he's a demon. And pretty much the guy's partner comes back, kills the priests, and... Pretty much him and his partner live on happy ever after, I guess. Um, but that's pretty much the end of the segment. His the guy the gay guy's partner comes back and kills the two priests. Pretty pretty intense segment. It was one of those segments where it, it you know, it went for all, went go for broke. Um really intense idea. Um crazy idea of taking the priests and taking it to a religion and stuff like that. Freaking crazy idea. It's an intense segment. Very well shot. Um, the idea is very, very in crazy idea and very intense segment. And that was one of those segments that was really done well because it was very intense. Uh, very, you know, just, I don't know. It, the movie really did, it went all for broke in that segment. Really, really crazy, intense segment. But yeah, that's J for Jesus. Uh, K is for Nell. Uh, also, J for Jesus are by uh, Denison Ramahlo. And K is for Nell, written by Christina Boonzent. Now, I might be butchering these names. I'm bad with names. Um, but a woman is pretty much about um, this girl. She's in her, in her apartment or whatever. And I believe like a bottle of like toenail, like toenail stuff dips over, and this black liquid forms in the sky, and the liquid goes in the building, ends up getting all these people to commit, you know, murders. And while this woman is looking out, she starts bleeding from her private area. Now the segment really wasn't much. Um, it was kind of a one of those segments that really wasn't much. Um, yeah, I mean honestly, I mean it. It really wasn't much. I mean, all it really is is black liquid in the sky, and then it leaks down, and people start killing people, and that's pretty much it. Not really much to the segment. But uh, L is for Legacy, which is the next one. Uh, they're by Lancelot Adwa Emmonson. Now, this one was another one of those lazy ones where all it is is a ritual going on, and they're summoning this demon. The demon arrives. Practical, but... I don't know, the the demon suit looked really fake. It literally looks like a guy in a suit. That's what it looks like. And it does have a lot of practical effects in there, though. Um, the demon is, you know, cutting people to pieces. You know, one swipe and people's heads are flying off. And, you know, a lot of gory effects. Um, but the suit itself on the demon, it was kind of cheap looking. It really does look like a guy in a suit. Um, but, yeah, another one of those lazy sets. There wasn't really much to it. Um, this ritual goes wrong, and this demon gets summoned and um, starts killing all the people in this village. And that's pretty much it. So there really wasn't much to it. Um, M is for Masticator to buy Robert Buchek. Um Now, this one was a very freaking crazy segment where pretty much this guy it starts off in slow motion. And this guy is running towards the camera. And as he's running, he starts attacking this person. Ends up biting a chunk out of this person. You know, turns around. It's all done in slow motion. And pretty much gets shot by the police. And at the end of the segment, the guy is talking to this drug dealer. He's like, oh, yeah, give me some of that. He's like, you, know, you want some bath salts? 
He's like, oh yeah, I'll buy some bath salts. And then pretty much it also before that it showed all of the bath salts did. It was a freaking crazy segment. Um, and it was just one of those crazy segments, very crazy. But it was very well done. The slow motion scenes were very well done. Um, and it was done, like I said, all in slow motion. Very interesting segment, very different segment. And didn't mind it. Very uh, crazy segment. Because the guy is just all wild out on drugs. And is playing this music. And he's running in slow motion. And he's like got his underwear on. He's, his eyes are like bright. like I think like white eyes or something like that. And he's just running. Freaking bites a guy in the neck. Freaking. And it's all it's practical effects. Um, pretty crazy. Pretty crazy scene. Um, next one is In for Nexus. Um, that was by Larry, uh, Fessenden. This one was, it was one of those segments where it was well shot and well edited, where it's pretty much following the events of this girl and this guy, they're in this relationship, and the girl's over here and the guy's over here, and they have to end up, they're trying to meet up with each other, and it, it's really well shot, where it's showing the guy walking through, a lot of fast cuts, and then the girls walking down to this, you know, road, and then it all goes to, it really does all go to hell, um, you know, just disaster happens, um, I believe, like, the boyfriend dies, I think the girlfriend dies, a huge accident happens, and it really does all go to hell, um, really well done segment, I mean, it was both shot, but besides that, I don't know. There really wasn't much to it, but it was well shot. I will give it that. It was well shot. Um, next one is O for O. I'm trying to say, I'm trying to say it right. Ochlo Crazy or Mob Rule, written by Hajim Ohata. Um, this one was a really fun segment. Very creative idea where this woman is in this jerk, like this um, this uh, courtroom. And she's being charged with murdering this zombie. And the zombies are really smart from this, you know, anti, you know, anti-virus thing. And they can talk and they have this court set up. And the girl is being trialed for murdering a zombie. And they put this device on her head and it turns her into a zombie. And that's pretty much it. But it was a well done segment. Pretty fun idea how the zombies end up getting the last laugh. You know, how, you know, it's flip-flop the human is being sent to jail or becoming a zombie because you know they killed a zombie pretty crazy a pretty fun idea not crazy but a pretty fun idea um the next one is p for this one was ridiculous segment p for p -p 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 scary or by todd rojo now this one was freaking awful in my opinion because it was freaking annoying all it is is these three characters, I believe three or two characters, whatever. It's all done in black and white. They keep stuttering. They're like they keep going. M -m -m my gosh, what, what, what was that? That was scary. Like it, it's really over the top. And they're literally they're walking in this dark tunnel and they're trying to figure out what's going on. And they end up seeing this guy. And all that happens is his face stretches out, and then they shine the light. You know, and his face keeps changing. And that's pretty much it. It was a freaking stupid segment. <laughs> a really annoying segment, too. It was a very, very bad segment. But yeah, P for P -P -P Scary, it was pretty bad, pretty bad segment. Q is for Questionnaire. They're by Rodney Asher. Now, this one was a very interesting one. With a bad ending, but an interesting one altogether. You know, this man ends up being on the street, end up taking this intelligence test, and while he's taking these tests, the tests end up getting worse and worse, and he ends up getting like brain surgery and stuff like that. And then the second mate turned into a gorilla, and I, I don't know, I guess it was to say, you know, oh, well, he's just going to turn into a gorilla, testing knowledge, stuff like that, but I don't know. Um,. The ending kind of was stupid because that's all that happens. They turn into a gorilla. Um, but, yeah, pretty, you know, bad ending. But the segment was done well building up to that. But besides the ending was pretty bad. 
Next one is R for Roulette, directed by Marvin Crenn. Now, this one was a pretty, you know, crazy segment where these people are playing Russian Roulette and they're trapped in this basement where there's a creature trying to get in and they're all playing to, you know, play Russian Roulette and they all end up, you know, you know, playing Russian Roulette. And it ends up showing this creature coming in to the uh, basement. And pretty crazy idea where the ending was supposed to say maybe they were, like, they were trying to survive this creature and trying to find another way out. So they tried to just do Russian roulette, try and escape this creature. It was a well done segment. Next one is S is for Split, or to buy, or to buy Duan Martinez Marunu. Um, this one was a pretty intense segment as well, where it's all done in very well done idea, where it's like a split screen. The man gets on the phone, answers the phone. Um, his wife is saying there's someone breaking into the house. Very suspenseful scene where the wife trying to hide gets caught, gets killed. The husband hears all on the phone. Then the freaking killer goes in the freaking the baby's room and where their baby is and kills the baby. But you don't see it, but you hear the baby being killed. It's a freaking disturbing scene. And it's a freaking crazy twist where the guy was having an affair where he was at on a visit trip or whatever and he ended up being gay. And the wife to the gay guy that he was having an affair with ended up being the the person who killed the the guy who was having the affair with uh, her husband. Uh, ended up killing the other guy's family. Freaking crazy idea. I mean, it was well shot. Really creative idea of the split screen. You know, where it's showing a split screen and his reaction and her reaction. Um, it was well directed. Really intense. Um, and it was a really well done uh, segment. Um, but as you guys can see so far, the segments for the majority have been really good. Um, now, the first movie, there's a lot of bad ones. But in here, there's a lot of good ones. So um, as you guys can see so far, from for the most part, they've been really good. Um, next one is T for, T for Torture Porn. Heard to buy Jen and Sylvia Suske. Now... This one was pretty much about this girl at this, you know, audition for porn. And these guys are treating her real bad and talking to her real bad. And this one was a pretty well done practical effects. But, you know, the idea, I mean, it really wasn't much. The girl, she pretty much turns into this demon creature and kills everybody. Um, now, the practical effects were done well because a lot of gore in that segment. But um, as far as the idea in general, it was kind of lackluster. But that's pretty much it for uh, torture porn. I mean, the girl, she's in an audition for a porno, and then these guys are all talking to her real bad, and she turns to a demon and kills them all. That's pretty much it. Next one is is You for Utopia, written by Vincenzo Natalie, I believe. Um, but it's pretty much about how there's this one guy who's not like everybody else, and everybody else is sort of like perfect, and he... Steps out of the line, knocks over this thing, and these freaking machines come up and freaking kill him. And it's about how perfect society and stuff like that, and uh, everybody is absolutely perfect. Really, really inventive segment, and it was well done. And, you know, the atmosphere I didn't mind as well. So, yeah, you for, U for Utopia is pretty much it. V is for Vacation or by Jerome Sable. Um, this one was a freaking crazy segment where... Um, this guy ends up calling his girlfriend, and then his buddy gets on the phone, and his buddy's a freaking psycho. He's like, oh yeah, look at this old woman that we screwed last night. Oh yeah, your, your, your boyfriend, he's been cheating on you this whole time. And the girl, she's like crying. Then the freaking mom, the old lady, she like wakes up because it's like a mom and her daughter, but those two dudes were screwing. The mom character gets up, kills both of the characters... And pretty much they walk out of there. And it was all shot through the cell phone because it was done with a video call with the guy's girlfriend. Freaking crazy segment. It was well done. Very intense segment. Very well done. So yeah, I really enjoyed that segment. Very well done. Next one is W for Wish. Um, Steven, it was directed by Steven Kostansky. Now, this one was a really, you know crazy segment as well 
Because it's all done through toy, like a toy commercial. And it's showing these two kids, they're playing with their favorite action figures. And it's like saying, imagine if you could live in the world of the action figure. And these two, these two kids, they're in this world where the action figures are. And at the end of the segment, this guy ends up, you know, getting him in a bag and carrying him in a bag off, carrying him off in a bag. And pretty much the rest of the segment is filled with, you know, really well done practical effects, really well done atmosphere, directed very well. Kind of reminded me of those, you know, toy commercials where it's showing you, oh yeah, these people, like, look at all these new, new toys, stuff like that. Really, really creative, inventive uh, segment and. Um, it was really well directed, uh, had a good atmosphere, had really good practical effects in there. Um, and it was kind of a crazy idea, you know, it reminded me of like a crazy toy commercial and like these kids were like, imagine if you could go into their world and then go into the world ends up being complete hell. I mean, ends up being, you know, really bad, but, uh, that's pretty much it for W is for wish. Now, this one was pretty disturbing as well. Uh, X is for a xylophone by Julian Murray and Alexandre Bustillo. Now, this one was pretty much about how this grandmother is watching this kid. This kid ends up beating real hard on a xylophone, making really loud noise, stuff like that. Then the freaking grandmother freaking snaps, kills the kid, cracks open like the chest, and uses the rib cage as a xylophone. You know, it's like going, like, the parents come back because she's babysitting the girl. The parents come back, she's just sitting there going, like, ting, 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 ting. Like, playing, like, a tune on the freaking kid's rib cage. Freaking crazy segment. Really crazy segment. This movie really does not, like, have any limit. This movie really does go the farthest it can go. Like, both these movies really did. The first movie, I I don't like as much as this movie. But I can say both movies went as far as you could go. Um, some segments did. Um, pretty pretty intense films. Um, so yeah, X for Xylophone. It was a pretty crazy segment. Next one is Y is for Youth or by Sochi Umizawa. Now, this one was a pretty crazy segment. But I mean, the idea was kind of crazy. Kind of a weird segment. Where this girl, she has she has these really abusive parents, and she ends up imagining what can they like what they can turn to turn into, and pretty crazy stuff. They start turning these weird creatures. She like turns her dad into a giant penis or something. <laughs> pretty freaking crazy freaking scene. I don't remember if it's her dad or her mom or what, but freaking crazy scene. Pretty freaking crazy segment. I mean. It's a little bit of a weird segment, but I can say it's a pretty crazy segment. So yeah, why is for youth? And it was okay, pretty crazy segment. My favorite one though is Z for Zygo, written by Chris Nash. Now this one was my favorite segment. This one was literally one of the most intense segments I've seen in a you know in like stuff like you know. In an anthology film. Got the term there for a second. But one of the craziest segments out of both ABC of Death films. And one of the craziest segments I've seen in an anthology film. Um, is, this, is this segment. Freaking some of the best special effects. I have to say this. Some of the best special effects I've seen this in, 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 you know, in an anthology film. My favorite segment of the film, because it's very intense, very crazy, very disturbing, and very gory. Now, the idea is pretty much about this pregnant woman. Her husband leaves her at the house, and it's pretty much 13 years later. And the girl has been using these roots to keep her baby inside of her. And the baby has grown to a full... Her stomach is pretty much, like, all pushed out. And they, the mother runs out of roots. And the husband was supposed to come back in the X amount of years. Well, she ran out of these roots. And she ends up, the baby, freaking crazy, crazy, disgusting, disturbing, gory as heck scene. Where literally the baby sort of like breaks her arm and pushes all of the insides out of her mouth. 
You know, she's spitting her heart out, spitting her guts out, um, spitting all of her organs out. Her bones end up breaking and cracking, and you know, the the child ends up like sliding, you know, their arm into her arm, and then the other arm into that arm, and basically she becomes like the child becomes is like wearing her skin or something like that. Freaking one of the most insane segments I've ever seen. And really well done, really well done practical effects. Not just well done, really well done practical effects. Freaking phenomenal makeup effects. Um, freaking phenomenal, crazy freaking scene. Like, phenomenal makeup effects is freaking crazy segment. And a freaking disturbing part where the freaking husband comes home. And the daughter is in now in the mom's body, but the dad is talking about how he wants more kids. A <laughs> freaking crazy ending. Um, and that's pretty much the end of that segment. Um, so yeah, all together, uh, ABC of Death 2, um, I feel like it has more creative segments. As you guys seen, there were more segments that I thought were better. There were more segments that had better atmospheres. There were more segments that were just all together, you know, more well made than the first movie. The first movie had a couple of really good ones, but this one had, for the majority, almost all of them were good. Um, there were a few ones, like, you know, uh, like, there was a few of them that I really didn't care for, um, but, you know, like, the L for Legacy, um, uh, N is for Nexus, I mean, it was a little shot, but there wasn't really much to it. I mean, there's a few of them in there that, they're, that you know, were kind of lackluster, but overall, ABC of Death 2 is definitely a lot better than the first movie. I really enjoyed it, and, um, yeah, so anyways, guys, thanks for watching my review on ABC of Death 2, and, um, it's a really well-done sequel. I feel it's better than the first movie, and, um, yeah, I think I thought it's a big improvement. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching my review on ABC of Death 2, and I will see you guys in the next review. Bye, guys.